know how much you're going to make the next year. You don't know what your, you know, what, what fuel cost is going to be. You don't know what, you know, college cost is going to be. You don't, you don't know what the rate of return on your investments is going to be. Those are all unknowns. We just don't know that kind of stuff. Yet you got to plan. You got to give it your best shot. You got to, you know, start putting money aside um, and and adapt as time goes along. I mean, you know, who knew what was going to happen with, you know, home heating, fuel, and gasoline. So you make hard choices and you adjust. And if we need. If we have to come back after two years, and even though we <coughs> promised three, and because something unforeseen, well, people, you know, I mean, you, you, you know, you just you have to you have to adapt. But you, I don't think you can just say, look, I'm not sure what the numbers are going to be for the next three years, and I'm just, you know, I'm just I'm just going to I'm not saying you're saying to ignore it, but but you you can't just uh, lack planning. You've got to just give it your best shot. And uh, um, anyway, my so my two cents there is that I think um, for the people that are inclined to um, be willing to get the value, pay for what the value they perceive that the town is providing for them. Um, as much as you may turn some people off to that kind of a three-year number that can be pretty scary, I think you gain a lot of support for people who appreciate the planning that you're doing, you know, that you promised, keeping your promise to do this kind of long-term planning. Through all kinds of campaigns over the years, you know, I've heard a big criticism. We never do any long-term planning. Everything's last minute. You know, we're always trying to just fix problems. We only respond when things you know, become real big problems. This is a good opportunity to lay it out there for people to, to show that you're all doing your jobs, fulfilling the promise you made last year at the end of town meeting to, you know, solve this perpetual problem that we have here, you know, through good planning. And I applaud you for it. I think, uh, I think you really ought to seriously consider going ahead with a three-year override and, you know, fine-tune these numbers. But I think this is a, a great presentation. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I'd like to second something Jeff just said. Um, he used a term which I had uh, I hadn't focused on before, but I think it's a it's a good term to use, and it's the notion that this is a structural issue. And um, you know, I I don't know if you see something that isn't apparent to the public that it looks like this is baked into the uh, the town's fiscal situation for you know the foreseeable future with about two and a half. And uh, double digit increases in these benefits, this is going to be an ongoing problem. But uh, I had a, a question, and that was um, what was the, the thinking behind adding the, um, the four fire positions, the, uh, the ALS and the two in, two out? I take it that's a, an additional service level beyond what we currently have in town. That, that is correct. Uh, <laughs> we go back. A couple of years ago, the uh, the board voted to uh, hire an independent consultant team to evaluate the uh, fire department and its operations. And uh, as a result, a report was filed. And that report had, Phil, help me, how many recommendations were in there? 82. 82. 82. 82 recommendations. <coughs> and the board then <coughs> formed a committee which uh, Mr. Dardino and Mr. Vino were participants along with members of the fire department and a member of the police department yeah, committee. and the finance, a member of the finance committee, I, mean, I think it was Mr. Waldman. And uh, they reviewed all of the uh, recommendations and came before the board with uh, some recommendations. And it turns out that that was the top priority. The second one was related to a west side fire station which is a uh, more of a capital expense. Uh, the idea of going to ALS, uh, that piece of it was that right now we have ALS service through, I think it's Armstrong uh, Ambulance Service. And they, they have arrived in Wuhan. So when our EMS firefighters go out on a call and they need a, a higher level of service, they have to call an Armstrong. Of course, Armstrong could be in Wilmer, or it could be anywhere, depending on what's going on. So there's an issue of response time. There's also uh, a higher revenue associated with that kind of a call. So it, it's been cut to the board that in the process of bringing this forward, we would uh, enjoy some revenue. That, you know, at one time, we heard that it would pay for itself. I don't think anyone really believes that. but. It certainly, the cost, uh, the additional revenue will help offset the cost. <coughs> Secondly, is that there's a national, uh, help me with the. Yeah, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. You know, I, um, 
there's a uh, national standard for firefighting. OSHA okay. OSHA, OSHA and the uh, National Fire Prevention. Uh, it's, it's the standard across the country of uh, what's called the two in, two out rule. And what it means is, is in any engagement, there's two firefighters inside the engagement and two firefighters outside the engagement. And this really provides for safety, not only for the, for the uh, firefighter, but also for the, for the uh, citizens and the people caught in the fire. Okay? What we have now is not that standard. We have um, basically a four-man shift, which means when we report to a fire, we have three people report to a fire. One stays back in the fire station. Um, <clears throat> we then call, if the fire is engaged, we then call in a, an officer or in some firefighter who's off-duty off to come to the fire. Okay, but when we begin to hit the fire, we don't meet the national standard. And it's an OSHA standard. It's not, it, it applies to every place. This additional firefighter will not only give us ALS, which means we'll have um, service in town for people who have these severe, who have a severe problem. Anybody right now falls down with a heart attack, okay, um, this service is coming out of uh, Woburn. Sometimes it comes out of Wilmington, but it's either Wilmington or Woburn um, rather than North Reading. So we're, we're really getting a huge, this is a huge bang for the buck. For, for these for $300,000, we'd put in four firefighters, we'd meet two in, two out. We'd, uh, we'd, we'd begin starting ALS, which, which has an increase in revenue, may not pay for the whole thing. The first year, it's $300,000, okay? The next year, it would be something less than that $300,000 because on, or maybe within two or three years, ALS would be operational. The, the most towns that have instituted ALS have seen a doubling of their ambulance revenues, which for us, if we doubled our ambulance revenues, would be something in the order of $250,000. So, you know, other people have said, oh, it more than pays for itself. We're not saying that. We're not suggesting it more than pays for itself, but it certainly would make a, a large indent in raising the service to the service that's the national standard. I'm going to comment a little bit further on this. Uh, we recently uh, subscribed to a benchmarking uh, service, and uh, in the benchmarking service, uh, and we have, don't have the final report yet, but in the uh, draft report, uh, one learns that you know if you compare to some of the what we call sister towns, not necessarily adjacent to us, but towns that are similar in makeup, uh, you'll find that the cost, our fire cost, is pretty much on average. But because of our structure, right, and, and the fact that we have a limited number of people on the shift, we have a high overtime cost. Now, one of the things that I personally feel is part of bringing on the additional firefighters, and perhaps in step with looking at joint uh, dispatch or community uh, uh, dispatch, uh, we have the opportunity to reduce some of our overtime process. So, uh, you know, I think this is a step toward making some significant organizational changes that will provide for service and take and reduce some of the, uh, the high cost of overtime. Now, in other communities where their overtime budgets are, are lower, they have more people on the force. Because right now, if we have one person out on vacation or sick or holiday uh, schedule or whatever, we have to put someone else in that place. We don't have a choice, and, and they're being paid at an overtime rate. So that piece of the budget, uh, you know, certainly th this is a step toward uh, trying to help that situation out, too. Any other questions? I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I, I appreciate that, that this does seem to add um, some benefits to the town, but um, I'm looking at the school budget where there's more kids coming into the system every year. So effectively, you're having service cuts, even if you know uh, if you're going to fund it on a, a level kind of basis. Whereas I, I don't think the town number of households in town is increasing by the same percentage. I might be wrong, but you know I just think that's certainly one way to, to look at these different uh, you know budget. I would, res I would respond to that from the point of view, if you look at the number of firefighters that we have on duty, you go back 20 years, 
or more. It, it, more than that. It, it hasn't been any, anybody added, and the number of homes in, in the community has increased significantly over that period of time. In fact, if you look across the entire town government, there's been very little increase in personnel, and I think most of it's been in the police department, and that's been funded by various federal and state programs. Uh, um, I'd also like to add that the uh, request for the additional firefighters uh, is for the second of the three years. In that year, we're also looking for more than just level services in the school department as well. Um, when we put together the three-year budget, the first year is looking at level services across the system because even just at that level, the impact on the tax rate is significant. Um, the impact in the second and third years is much less dramatic as a percentage of the basic taxes. Uh, and so it was in the second year that we felt that we could begin to look at adding some of the services that we feel we need in the schools and that the town feels it needs. Um, I would um, second what they said about uh, firefighters. When I used to serve on the Finance Committee way back, uh, for the most part in the 80s, um, I think we only had one less firefighter then than we do now because it, we had the minimum. I think we've got one reserve now that we didn't have then. Uh, and, and that was, uh, it was over 20 years ago. Um, so I think what, we've, what we're looking at uh, in the fire department is that we have the minimum number of people we need for the service that we provide. We have a chance for a relatively little extra budget. It would be an, an initial kick of 300000 but with, um, with a little bit of time, we get some of that back on the ALS revenues and um, it, it substantially improve both the uh, safety of the firefighters, the safety of the people in the homes, um, the response time for people who have uh, health issues, and you know the effectiveness of the department. Um, I, I think it's a, a good thing to think about, and it would come at a time when the schools were also looking to increase their level of services. Anyone else? Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, Bob. Marcy Bailey, 21 Dwayne Drive. Um, I have a couple of comments and a couple of questions. I'd like to echo most of what um, Mr. Simon says. And I think a good reason to support the three-year-old ride for, is the example of the firefighters in the second year. To go one year this year, and you know we're going to come back to the town next year, not only to meet level services, but to put this um, these additional firefighters on to comply with OSHA standards. I wouldn't want to take a chance that the town is going to vote yes this year, no next year, yes, no. You put the employees on a roller coaster. And I think, you know, keeping as a taxpayer, for me, be it um, teachers, firefighters, municipal workers, it's important to provide those employees with some stability and not looking, you know, am I going to have a job next year? And any employee on the school side or the municipal side who looks at this list and looks at a one-year override knows that who could be on the chopping block next year. And I don't think that we keep the best people in the most stable environment that way. So I just would like to add that I think that's another reason to support a long-term plan. Um, that comment being made, I do have a couple of questions. Bob, on the three-year plan slide, um, which I guess is a little less than halfway through the presentation, um, it shows fixed costs <coughs> increasing. Is that because a certain amount is get? I don't know. If this, does this include the exempt debt service, and is that because some of the exempt debt service is falling off? I, it wasn't clear why that was the one piece. If I can read the small numbers, next why the one, one piece? You're looking at the three-year plan? Yeah, yeah the next one right after that. Yep. Uh, See, it, it goes off by about 600 k from FY08 to FY09, and then back up just a couple hundred. Additional okay. staff, too. Staff. There's a, there's a uh, the high school bonding has fallen off. Okay. And the fixed cost here include exempt debt. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, keep in mind that depending on what moves we make in finance associated with that nine million sitting out there, uh, those numbers might get adjusted out. Uh, certainly by 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think we're all waiting 
holding our breath associated with getting <coughs> some 